Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater Soundcheck. This time out, a creative reverb tool from Zynaptic. Let's get started. Today we're checking out Adaptiverb from Zynaptic. Now, Adaptiverb is a unique type of reverb processor. It's not really intended to recreate halls, rooms, cathedrals, those types of spaces that other reverbs do very well. Rather, it's a powerful sound design tool that's ideal for enhancing your tracks and for creating unique ambiences. Adaptiverb uses several different technologies, and it applies those technologies very differently than other reverb processors do. For example, it uses artificial intelligence to look at the input signal and to adapt the reverb so that it's shaped to really enhance that input. You can set it up so that it follows what's happening with your input. You can also set it up so that it synthesizes different tails and applies those to the reverb signal as well. Let's take a look at how this works. Adaptiverb is a plugin that works in all the usual formats on Mac and PC. RTAS, AAX, audio units, and VST2 and VST3. All of the controls are contained within a single window, which is split into several different sections. Across the top here, we have some functions. If we click on this, we get tool tips, and we also can see the different sections. We have our input section, we have the Bionic Sustain Resynth, which we'll talk about more later. The basic reverb controls are here across the bottom. We have harmonic contour filtering here, our output section is here, and we have an XY grid here in the middle. We can choose to view just the main screen, where we have overall control, or we can look at fine tune, which gives us access to a variety of parameters. Clicking the question mark opens the manual, and we can set up MIDI controllers here. You can either assign controllers to parameters, or Adaptiverb will actually learn incoming MIDI controllers. You can also see the signal flow within Adaptiverb by clicking here. And this gives you a flow chart that shows you the input processing and where the signal goes after that. You can see this is a very complex plugin. It's doing a lot of math in the background to create its sounds. We also have a live verb which we select by turning on this clock here. Now, as I mentioned, adaptive verb is very mathematically intense, and that results in long latency. When you're running this inside a DAW, this isn't a problem because latency compensation will take care of any of those delays. But if you're working with, for example, a virtual instrument, you might want to turn on live mode. You're going to have latency on the reverb tail, but your direct signal will go through with no latency at all. So let's turn our tooltips back on here. In our input section, we have pre-delay for the incoming signal. We also have a low-cut filter. You can set that to whatever frequency you like, and this will clean up any bass rumbles that might be in the input signal. The input air control is basically a high frequency boost, and this will change what happens inside the Bionic Sustain resynthesizer, as well as add brightness inside the filtering and inside the reverb. Moving down to the bottom of the screen, this is where our reverb processing controls are. Our first parameter is reverb model. The first type we have is all pass, and that's similar to the way that most reverb processors work. It uses a variety of all pass filters. Our second choice is ray trace. Raytrace uses a 3D model of an actual room and something like 16,000 different traces within that room to create the reverbs. Raytrace HD is a similar model, however it faces the speakers in a different direction. They're aimed at a 40 degree angle rather than directly away from the listener. The reverb source control is very important. This selects and mixes between the incoming signal that's coming into the input and the signal that's coming out of the Bionic Sustain resynthesizer. So you can blend between those two sources, or you can choose one or the other. When we're all the way to the left, we're purely listening to the input. That's what's feeding into the reverb section. If we go all the way to the right, we're just listening to the resynthesizer, and that's what's feeding into the reverb section. Reverb size determines the size of the modeled room that we're working with, and reverb damp affects the high frequency damping in that model. Now let's talk about the Bionic Sustain resynthesizer. This is an entire synthesis section within the reverb that processes the input signal before it goes to the reverb section. Basically what it does is it ignores the transients in the signal, just looks at the sustain portion of the signal, and it synthesizes a sustaining drone based on that. The simplify control gives us a range of different oscillators in the first third, and as we move forward, it determines the number of oscillators that are processing the signal. When we're all the way to the right, we're using just a single oscillator. As we move left, we add more and more oscillators. Richness adds resonance to our Bionic Sustain resynthesizer signal. What resonance is added is determined by the interval control here. We can go an octave down, a fourth down, detune the incoming signal, add a fifth up, or add an octave up. We can also add randomized pitch modulation using the pitch randomize control, and that applies to the interval that's created here. And finally, we can set the diffusion for that Bionic Sustain resynthesizer signal as well. The XY controller here in the center of the screen works with Bionic Sustain resynthesizer. As we move up in the y-axis, we're adding more sustain to the resynthesized signal. Along the x-axis, we're controlling the blend of the dry signal and the resynthesized signal. Also here in the center, we have a switch that turns freeze on and off. Now, freeze basically captures the incoming signal and sustains it so that you get an ongoing drone-type sound. 
A very powerful sound shaping aspect of adaptive verb is the harmonic contour filtering. That's over here on the right hand part of the screen. First of all, we can add breathiness. Basically, this is mixing high frequency noise from the input signal back in, and it gives us additional brightness and an openness to the top end. We can set the amount of harmonic filtering either in a positive direction or a negative direction. There are two different modes for the harmonic contour filter. When we're in keyboard mode, we can actually use this keyboard down here at the bottom to determine what harmonics are being allowed to pass through. So you set this up just like a music keyboard. In this case, I basically have a, a G augmented chord with an added natural fifth here. When we play through that, those notes will be emphasized, everything else will be filtered, depending on where we set this harmonic filtering control. When we move in a right-hand direction on the harmonic filtering control, we're removing the signals that aren't part of this keyboard. When we move in the other direction, we're actually adding in the notes that are not represented on the keyboard. So you can either clean up the signal moving to the right by taking out non-harmonic frequencies, or you can add those non-harmonic frequencies back in by moving to the left, which fills out the sound. We have four different modes when we're working with keyboard filtering. Resonant and Resonant Plus here on the left hand side are a little broader filter types, they're a little more gentle. When we get here to the right to Quantize and Quantize Plus, we're basically hard filtering based on where this keyboard is set. We can also set up five different snapshots, and those snapshots are live. You can simply move between those, or you can use automation to select a snapshot as well. This allows you to follow a harmonic progression in your music if the chords are changing or the keys are changing, for example. Our other harmonic filter mode, Track, uses artificial intelligence to follow what's happening with the input signal. So it bases the harmonic filtering depending on what's coming into the filter. When we're in this setting, we can also use Hold, which will lock down in a particular filter profile, and you can apply that to other signals. If we switch to Linked, the Hold function will be linked to the Freeze function. So when the signal is frozen, the filter will also be held. When the signal is not frozen, it will follow as normal. Rounding things out, of course we have our wet dry mix here, a bypass control, and a wet gain. The reason you have the wet gain is so you can add additional gain to low level reverb signals if you like. Now all this is obviously fairly complex, and it's much easier to hear than it actually is to describe. So what I've done is I've set up a short loop of a grand piano recording we did here in Sweetwater's Studio A. This is basically the coda part, it's kind of a free ad lib at the end of a song. We'll route this through adaptive verb so you can hear the effect of some of these parameters.
as you can hear, you have incredible sound shaping possibilities as far as creating ambiences and putting space around your notes. And it's so cool that you can actually tune those ambiences to match the incoming signal and to keep the harmonic content very clean. There's no muddiness here, there's no mushiness. You can really set up the reverb so it enhances what's going on and you can add a surprising amount of reverb without washing out your dry signal. Adaptive Verb comes with a wide range of presets. Let's check some of those out. You select presets here at the top of the screen. You can either step through them one after another by using the left right buttons, or you can open up a menu that gives you access to all the different banks and the presets within those banks. As you can see, we have a wide range of sounds here. Everything from special ambiences and reverb effects, to drones, to basic effects, to music production reverbs. So let's listen to a few of these presets. If you're looking for a reverb processor that'll take you beyond standard rooms, halls, cathedrals, churches, then you're definitely going to want to check out Adaptiverb from Synaptic. This is as much a sound design tool as it is an ambience processor, and it can really work together with your input sources to enhance your tracks and create unique sounds, as well as to add life to dry signals. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher. <laughs>